Good afternoon. Uh, this presentation is about the evidence of the surgical management of the ulnar nerve neuropathy at the elbow. So a cubital tunnel, tunnel syndrome is the ulnar nerve neuropathy that is caused by compression, traction, or friction. And it is well known that this is the second most common peripheral neuropathy after the carpal tunnel syndrome. But still, modern diagnosis and treatment remain controversial. So it is important to highlight the sites of compression of the ulnar nerve in the elbow, which are from proximally to distally, the medial intermuscular septum, the arcade of uh, Struthers, the Osborne's ligament, and the fascia of the FCU. So the two main categories of surgical management of the uh, cubital tunnel syndrome are the in situ decompression and the anterior transposition. So a few words about in situ decompression. Uh, this technique consists of proximal to distal release of the ulnar nerve, nerve in all the possible sites of compression, and it is, seems to be faster and more cost-effective than the transposition. Transposition includes the mobilization of the nerve just anterior to the axis of the elbow flexion, and then stabilization either subcutaneous, intramuscular, or submuscular. And the reduction of the tension of the ulnar nerve during flexion is the, the aim of this uh, technique. And finally, medial epicondylectomy is the excision of the medial epicondyle, which is combined with simple decompression. And we have to take care that less than 20% is excised so that we um, prevent the elbow instability. And the osteotomy is in a plane just between the coronal and sagittal planes. So surgical treatment of cubital tunnel syndrome is increasing today. And even though more than 500 articles have been uh, published the last 10 years, we still don't have a consensus or standardized algorithm for the treatment. This meta-analysis uh, studied the in situ decompression versus transposition of the nerve, either subcutaneous or submuscular. And the result was that there was no significant uh, difference in clinical outcome and electrodiagnostic outcomes, but there were more complications with transposition. These studies uh, were more specific comparing in situ versus just subcutaneous transposition, and the results were no difference in clinical outcome again, but again more complications with the subcutaneous transposition. On the other hand, we have this article that studied the long-term reoperation, which was higher for the patients who uh, went under in situ decompression, uh, comparing with subcutaneous transposition. And biomechanical studies that resulted in higher pressure and higher strains at the ulnar nerve when the uh, simple decompression was performed. And these studies, uh, had a, a, a almost same result for in situ versus submuscular transposition where we had same uh, clinical improvement but wound complications were more for the uh, transposition. And when subcutaneous transposition was compared with submuscular transposition, the result was that there was a significant reduction of pain in patients who underwent submuscular but there were more complications. And medial epicondylectomy has been studied compared with all the other uh, techniques. And the result was that uh, patients were more satisfied with medial epicondylectomy and there were more complications with the transposition. But even though there is a conflict and we still don't have a clear answer of which one is better, we know that nerve instability and recurrence are indications for transposition. And this is a large systematic review which was published in 2020, included 30 studies and evaluated eight different operations. The outcomes that were evaluated were the response to treatment, the surgical site complications, the reoperation, and the recurrence of the uh, neuropathy. So the 
the conclusion of this study was that open in situ decompression with or without medial epicondylectomy was associated with the greatest response to treatment and the lowest risk of complications, reoperation, and recurrence, and that the submuscular transposition was the method which had the uh, biggest uh, rate of complications and reoperations. This study had some limitations. These were that the follow-up period was uh, less than six months in some of the studies. So we know that we need at least six to 21 months to evaluate the reoperation rate. Also, non-operative treatment was not included, and six studies included bilateral surgery, which may compromise the outcome. But the most important uh, limitation of the study was that the transpositions were not performed randomly. And this is a survey of members of the American Society of Hand Surgery. So 3,000 surgeons were asked about which uh, method uh, they preferred, and 1,000 of them completed the survey. So the result was that ma the majority of the surgeons uh, preferred the inside to the compression of the nerve when there was no subluxation. And this is a table that explains that. So the cases. Uh, one to six were from mild to, the, to severe cases and severe cases with comorbidities. And we can see that most of the surgeons preferred the open inside of decompression for all of them except for the mild ones which they uh, preferred the conservative management. And, and the least preferred uh, method was the medial epicondylectomy. And uh, before closing, I think uh, we have to highlight other factors that are very important for the outcome, which are a new compression or kinking of the ulnar nerve, proximally or distally, the tight compression sling over the nerve, the destabilization, the injury to the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve, the release of the nerve entrapments in all the uh, compression sites, the postoperative mobilization uh, early, and the compression by the fascia of the FCU. And these factors were mentioned by Susan McKinnon when she commented in 2009 in a comparative study because she believed that we have to focus away from the medial epicondyle and uh, the placement of the ulnar nerve anterior or, or not. And she said that we have to pay attention at all these factors because she believed that this would um, improve the outcome of the surgical management and would stop the argument regarding which technique is better. In conclusion, we don't have a standardized algorithm for treating the uh, cubital tunnel syndrome. We don't have prospective randomized controlled trials of patients who have similar diagnosis and are treated with different techniques, and they are evaluated with the same score. But in situ decompression remains reasonable because it has excellent outcomes and low risk of complications. Thank you.